Well, it's official. Democrats in the House officially unveiled two articles of impeachment against President Donald Trump. I will let Representative Jerry Nadler explain what those two articles of impeachment are. Let's watch. Over the last several months, the investigative committees of the House have been engaged in an impeachment inquiry into President Donald Trump's efforts to solicit foreign interference in the 2020 elections. Efforts that compromised our national security and threatened the integrity of our elections. Throughout this inquiry, he has attempted to conceal the evidence from Congress and from the American people. Our president holds the ultimate public trust. When he betrays that trust and puts himself before a country, he endangers the Constitution, he endangers our democracy, and he endangers our national security. The framers of the Constitution prescribed a clear remedy for presidents who so violate their oath of office. That is the power of impeachment. Today, in service to our duty to the Constitution and to our country, the House Committee on the Judiciary is introducing two articles of impeachment charging the President of the United States Donald J. Trump with committing high crimes and misdemeanors. The first article is for abuse of power. It is an impeachable offense for the president to exercise the powers of his public office to obtain an improper personal benefit while ignoring or in injuring the national interest. That is exactly what President Trump did when he solicited and pressured Ukraine to interfere in our 2020 presidential election, thus damaging our national security, undermining the integrity of the next election, and violating his oath to the American people. These actions, moreover, are consistent with President Trump's previous invitations of foreign interference in our 2016 presidential election. And when he was caught, when the House investigated and opened an impeachment inquiry, President Trump engaged in unprecedented, categorical, and indiscriminate defiance of the impeachment inquiry. This gives rise to the second article of impeachment for obstruction of Congress. Here, too, we see a familiar pattern in President Trump's misconduct. A president who declares himself above accountability, above the American people, and above Congress's power of impeachment, which is meant to protect against threats to our democratic institutions, is a president who sees himself as above the law. We must be clear, no one, not even the president, is above the law. So abuse of power and obstruction of Congress. Now, I'm going to give you my take on this, but before I do that, I kind of want to walk you through what we can expect. Let me remind you that the House of Representatives has the sole authority to impeach, and this will most likely pass in the House, meaning he will have officially been impeached once that vote takes place, which will most likely happen before the end of the year. But then it would go on to the Senate, where they would hold a trial and vote to convict and remove President Donald Trump. Now, you need a two-thirds majority to convict an impeached president, and assuming we get every single Democrat on board, which is highly unlikely, we need 20 Republicans to vote to actually convict and remove Donald Trump. So most likely, that isn't actually going to be the case. Donald Trump will probably be impeached, and then unless some drastic thing happens where Republicans feel as if they can get away with impeaching Donald Trump and not protecting him and still be politically viable in 2020, um, he most likely will get away with this. Now, the question is, will this hurt him in 2020 or will this help him in 2020 or will there kind of just be no effect? I don't necessarily know. And I think that people who are speculating also don't know. There's a number of ways how this can play out. But what we do know is is that Donald Trump will be impeached most likely, and then in the Senate, that is where this uh, story will end. Now, what's interesting is how this will take place in the Senate, because you, you're kind of seeing this divide between Donald Trump and Mitch McConnell when it comes to the way that they both want this to play out. So Mitch McConnell expectedly wants this to be a really quick endeavor. He just wants to 
hurry up, have the trial, vote on it, and then move on. So that way they can get back to doing nothing, I guess. And that will most likely take place before February. Um, in early January is what I'm assuming. Although Donald Trump, surprisingly, he actually wants this to drag on. Like, he wants to make a spectacle of this because he believes that politically that will benefit him. Now, as CNN reports, President Donald Trump and Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell are both looking ahead to the Senate impeachment trial, but there is a growing divide between the two over what that trial should look like, CNN has learned. In conversation with the White House, the Kentucky Republican has made clear he hopes to end the trial as soon as he can, an effort to both get impeachment off his lap and protect his conference from potentially damaging votes should the process break out into partisan warfare. That will include a continuous whip count until McConnell feels he has the votes to acquit the president and end the show. He has even floated a 10-day minimum during these talks, one person said. But the show is exactly what Trump wants. He's made clear to advisors privately that rather than end the trial as quickly as possible, he's hoping for a dramatic event, according to two people familiar with his thinking. He wants Hunter Biden, Representative Adam Schiff, and the whistleblower to testify. He wants the witnesses to be live, not clips of taped depositions, and he's hoping to turn it into a spectacle, which he thinks is his best chance to hurt Democrats in the election. Now, what I think is interesting is that for how much the right accuses Democrats of pursuing impeachment specifically for purposes of political expediency, here we have Donald Trump basically saying pretty explicitly, I want to drag out this trial because I think this will help me politically in 2020. Isn't that interesting? Now, it kind of shows like that reaction from Donald Trump demonstrates how juvenile and idiotic he is, quite frankly, because why does it matter if the whistleblower testifies? The whistleblower is irrelevant at this point. Why would we need Hunter Biden to testify in your impeachment trial to confirm what that there is nepotism and that's a problem, problem in politics? Yeah, no shit, Sherlock. You have your daughter serving in your fucking administration. Duh, nepotism is an issue, right? But what's that supposed to prove? You are the individual who's on defense. This is your trial. Hunter Biden isn't on trial. The whistleblower isn't on trial. So the fact that he thinks he can turn this around and make it about other people when he's the one on trial shows that he doesn't really understand how the process works. And it also shows how cocky and arrogant he is. He thinks that this is going to help him. He has no doubt about that. And maybe it will help him. But the fact of the matter is that this is a serious issue. You broke the law. You violated the Constitution. But in his mind... He did nothing wrong, or maybe he thinks he did nothing wrong, but according to his tweets, he believes that if you are doing a good job based on his own assessment as president, then why should you impeach the president? Because you violated the Constitution and abused power. Now, getting to my opinion on this, the two articles of impeachment, I think that that alone, yes, that is something that warrants impeachment, although <laughs> limiting the scope to just two articles, I think is a huge, huge mistake because it kind of undercuts the Democratic Party's argument because they say that they're pursuing impeachment, Nancy Pelosi does at least, because this is their duty. You know, they have a constitutional obligation to hold the president accountable, but he also obstructed justice 10 times according to the Mueller report. He was in violation of the emoluments clause on day one when he was sworn in. He's doing favors for the Saudis who are buttering him up by staying at his hotels. He made hush money payments to Stormy Daniels using campaign funds. So while the Ukraine call in and of itself is an abuse of power and his attempts to meddle with that process constitutes obstruction of Congress, you know, you undercut your own argument in saying this is our duty to pursue impeachment if you're letting him, you know, get a pass for all of these other issues. Now, I get strategically, you know, it makes sense to narrow the scope so that way the American people can kind of know what to focus on and not get lost. But duty is duty. You have a const constitutional obligation to hold the president accountable and you are essentially not doing what is required of you under the Constitution by giving him a pass on all of these other crimes. I mean, the American people need to know that he is guilty of all of these other charges of corruption and conflicts of interests and abuse of power, but you're choosing to give him a pass. Most likely, probably due to purposes of political expediency. So it's incredibly frustrating. And another issue with this is Nancy Pelosi is only pursuing impeachment 
begrudgingly so. We all know that she would have never pursued impeachment had progressives not forced her to do that because it was evident that when he was sworn in, as I stated, he was in violation of the Emoluments Clause. Nancy Pelosi wanted to give him a pass. Well, then Michael Cohen brought a check that confirmed he made hush money payments to Stormy Daniels. Well, Nancy Pelosi still didn't want to pursue impeachment. Robert Mueller released his report that showed he obstructed justice 10 times. Nancy Pelosi still didn't want to pursue impeachment. So the Ukraine call was the straw that broke the camel's back because she would look like an utter fraud and incompetent if she didn't finally pursue impeachment time after time after time. And Donald Trump was essentially getting this message that he's untouchable. He can do whatever he wants, break the law, brazenly violate the Constitution, and Nancy Pelosi will give him a pass. So it's clear that she never really wanted to pursue impeachment, and I don't think that she actually believes in it. But in a CNN town hall, she basically said something that undercuts the entire impeachment argument, and it's incredibly frustrating. She claimed that George W. Bush did not do something that rised to the level of impeachment. And what is that action? Well, he lied us into the Iraq war. But she claims even though he lied us into the Iraq war... That did not warrant impeachment. This is what she said specifically, and then when we come back, I'll tell you why that's problematic. So, uh, Speaker Pelosi, uh, you resisted calls for the impeachment of President Bush in 2006 and President Trump following the Mueller report earlier this year. Uh, this time is different. Uh, why did you impose? Why did you oppose impeachment in the past? And what is your obligation to protect our democracy from the actions of our president now? Thank you. I uh, thank you for bringing up the question about. Because when I became speaker the first time, there was overwhelming call for me to impeach President Bush on the strength of the war in Iraq, which I vehemently opposed. And again, I, again, I, I say again, I said, said it other places, I, I, that was my wheelhouse. I was intelligence. I was a ranking member on the Intelligence Committee. Uh, even before I became part of the leadership, a gang of four. So I knew there were no nuclear weapons in Iraq. It just wasn't there. They had to show us, they had to show the gang of four all the intelligence they had. The intelligence did not show that uh, that, that was the case. So I knew it was a, a misrepresentation to the public. But having said that, it was a, in my view, uh, not a ground for impeachment. Uh, that was, they won the election. They made a representation, and to this day, people think, people think that um, that it was the right thing to do. The people think that Iraq had something to do with 9/11. I mean, it's as appalling what they did. Uh, but I did, and I said, if somebody wants to make a case, you bring it forward. Uh, but I, I, they had impeached Bill Clinton for personal indiscretion and misrepresenting about it. Impeached him. Some of these same people are saying, oh, this doesn't rise to impeachment. We're the, right there impeaching Bill Clinton uh, for, uh, for being stupid in terms of uh, uh, something like that. <laughs> I mean, I love him. I think he was a great president. But being stupid in terms of that and, and, and what would somebody do not to embarrass their family. But in any event, um, and that's so they did. Bill Clinton, now they want me to do George. Uh, this, I just didn't want it to be a way of life in our country. As far as the uh, Mueller report, uh, there, there was a, a good deal of uh, the academics said, and a thousand, a thousand legal experts wrote a statement that said the Mueller report uh, is an impeach. What's in there is an impeachable offense. It wasn't um, so much of what's in the Mueller report will be more clear once some of the court cases are resolved, but it wasn't so clear to the public. The Ukraine just removed all doubt. It was self-evident that the president mis uh, undermined our national security, jeopardized the integrity of our elections as he violated his oath of office. There's just, you, you, that's something that cannot be ignored. She literally gave George W. Bush a pass when he lied us into a war that killed hundreds of thousands of people, mostly civilians. So now people who are skeptical of impeachment are going to point to that and say, 
well, you didn't impeach George W. Bush for doing something worse, and now you're impeaching Donald Trump because of an abuse of power? Isn't what George W. Bush did the ultimate abuse of power? Now, my response to that is, this is why you can never let your foot off the gas and you have to have one standard that you apply universally, right? The fact that Democrats gave George W. Bush a pass makes the impeachment of future rogue presidents that much more difficult. So by her admitting that she gave Bush a pass, and I'm glad that she told the truth there, that's going to delegitimize this effort now to impeach Donald Trump. Now, should we still pursue impeachment against Donald Trump? Absolutely, because he broke the law. And if, you know, a normal American did what Donald Trump did, they would have already been locked up in jail. We lock people up for smoking weed in certain states. So, of course, we need to hold elites accountable. But this is what happens, right? The more that you give elites a pass, the more difficult it becomes, the more that, you know, they'll use this against you when you finally do want to hold people accountable. Now, what I also hear that undercuts the argument against Donald Trump is, you know, the impeachment against Bill Clinton was bad because it helped him. Although when I hear about, you know, oh, well, nobody, uh, Clinton lied, but nobody died. That's kind of a shitty argument because Clinton committed perjury. Yes, he wasn't impeached over the blowjob. He was impeached over perjury. And while that probably isn't as bad as what even, uh, you know, Andrew Johnson and certainly not as bad as Donald Trump or George W. Bush did or Richard Nixon did, that's still perjury. Like if a normal American committed perjury, that individual would undoubtedly be prosecuted. So we need to stop giving elites a pass um, and we need to acknowledge that if we are going to live in a system with fair justice, then we can't allow for a two-tiered justice system where elites get a pass. And, oh, well, you know, it's okay. I know that they broke the law, but nobody died. Or, you know, it's not as big of a deal as this other president who broke the law, but we didn't convict. No. It's time that we stop being cowards and we actually hold elites accountable. And yes, that means basically... Impeaching every single president because um, most of them break the law. But do you want to know why most presidents are violating the Constitution and being openly corrupt and doing war crimes? It's because we never fucking hold them accountable. So we're finally doing that with Donald Trump. And I get being skeptical about, you know, potentially bad ramifications. This could help Donald Trump. But Here's the thing, political considerations aside, we have to do the right thing. And the right thing, of course, is to impeach Donald Trump. And going forward, we impeach every single president who breaks the law or violates the Constitution. None of them should get a pass, Republican or Democrat. Because, again, if poor people did what Bill Clinton or Donald Trump or um, any president, George W. Bush did, they would be imprisoned. So why are we giving elites a pass? The answer is we shouldn't. So here's what I say about the impeachment of Donald Trump. I agree with these articles of impeachment. I think that the Ukraine call, of course, demonstrated an abuse of power, and that warrants his impeachment and removal. Probably not going to happen. He's not going to be removed. Regardless, we take it as far as we possibly can go. And anyone who votes against this, any Republican or Democrat who does this for purposes of political expediency, let history judge them. But what we do is we pressure Democrats to do the right thing. And as someone who has been urging Democrats and lambasting them for not being strong enough against Republicans, even if they've failed to hold rogue presidents in the past accountable, that doesn't mean that we shouldn't hold them accountable now. So let's agree going forward we stop giving people in power a pass. And yes, I believe that the scope of this impeachment inquiry should have been broadened. There should be more articles of impeachment filed against Donald Trump. Regardless, this still warrants impeachment. And we need to take this as far as we can go, which will most likely be the Senate. But regardless, we'll at least be satisfied knowing that we did the correct thing. We held these rogue tyrants who think that they can get in power and do whatever the fuck they want accountable. And I'll leave that there. This is about principle to me. The Humanist Report is fake news. Mike only cares about Crazy Bernie and his wacky socialist ideas. Sad, very sad. I'm unsubscribing.